Hello everyone. Hello, welcome to Lina, Lina and, and Radha's Radha show. show. How are you doing? Can you hear us? Yes, please let us know if you can hear us. So we know that we can start with the session today, guys. So tell us how are you doing today? Just going to be checking how the live session is going here, guys, so I can read your comments here in the computer as well. So I would like you to tell us uh, with a like or a thumbs up if you are hearing us properly. How are you today, Rada? I'm very good. And you, Lina? Well, all good. Working a lot, but all good. Thank, thank you. We cannot complain when we are working a lot. Oh, no, no. Yes, it's definitely. Good. That's lots of work, but as I told you before, too much work is a good problem to have. Exactly. How are you doing? Hey, Hello, Bets. Bets. Hi, Shada. How are you? Oh, lovely. You guys can hear us. That's Great. amazing. Thank Great. you for connecting with us, guys. Hi, Dr. Dipesh. Hello, Dr. Dipesh. <laughs> How are you? Lovely. Great. So... How are you doing guys? Tell us. Do you have any questions? Okay guys, so let's, now that we know that you can hear us, let's get a little bit into subject. But yes. before we start anything, apparently we have some news from ADC. A lot of people have Fresh been asking news. us. Yes, a lot of people have been asking us about what do you guys think that ADC is going to do, if there are going to be exams or not. Uh, and we told you guys, well, that's not possible for us to know because yeah. we are not there. But apparently we, we have just some... Exactly, something. they released something. So let's see what it's written in there. Apparently, guys, um, they're not going to have any exams scheduled for November and October. So all the exams are postponed up until 2021. Yes, unfortunately. Yeah. But, but. That, I mean, that's good. I mean, uh, I was talking to a friend the other day and I remember that we were chatting about the uncertainty of not knowing what is it that ADC is going to do. But now, somehow, we know. We know. So at least, at least we have that. Again, uh, just keep the motivation up, guys. We told you in the first session, I think, uh, don't wait this time. Just yes. try to work harder, try to perfect yourself, to perfect your tasks. And I think that's a way a good way to use the time, don't you think, Rada? Exactly. Keep up uh, with the the work. Uh, just keep uh, or maintain the level. And the good news also is that they will extend uh, for one year the validity of the written exam for those uh, who have their um, examining expiring yeah. on October 2020 yeah. to November 2022. Two. Yeah. So those people are going to have a year extension of the written examination because they are going to take in account obviously this entire year yeah. that I, I'm not going to say that it go, was going to waste but I mean it's June already half of the year is gone yes. and there's not too many things that we are able to do right now. So apparently the guys are going to have some extension. Those are good news as well. And an additional attempt uh, at the practical uh, examination at the next available opportunity. You can uh, always contact them at practical at adc.org.au if you want to discuss any options uh, with them uh, regarding the uh, booking uh, examination. Yes. So at least we know True. Uh, this because when we don't know, you know, you feel everything is kind of foggy. Uh, you don't know uh, where to go, what to expect. Now we know for sure that we don't have an exam this year. And uh, I'm sure, I mean, this is my opinion that uh, we will uh, start next year from February because um, Recently, I heard that the uh, tourism minister uh, announced that the border, uh, the borders will be closed up to December this year. This year yeah. It is likely to uh, be closed. So I guess that they will start from next year, uh, February, because yeah. they are usually on holidays uh, uh, from Jan. So... Yeah, at least we know what to, yeah, what to do. expect. And in better words, by Dr. Depeche, it says, 
Uncertainty has become certainty. More time to practice. Exactly. We couldn't say it better than that. And that's, that's true. That Now we don't have the excuse that we don't know what's going to happen. We do know what's going to happen. So make the best of your time. Hello, Omana. Dr. Diksha, how are Hi. you? Priya, hello. Hi. Harman, how are nice you? Nice to, to see you joining the, <laughs> the yes. show. So, well, we will wait for some people uh, to, to join. Yep. We can still have a little chit chat if you have any question. Um, meanwhile, we are happy to answer. Yes, okay. definitely. What have we have planned for today, Greta? So, uh, today we are going to talk about the, uh, again, technical uh, assessment. We would like you to, you know, empower uh, to your assessment uh, so during this um, period that you cannot uh, join any course join any uh, center to have a professional assessment uh, we want you to know how to assess yourself uh, to get the better from this period hello priya hello priya how are you today so um we're waiting for more people to join. Meanwhile, have you noticed our super gowns, guys? Oh, look at this. Then told one You see how so smart today, we are? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> at least we look smart. Yes. I mean, we don't have to be, we look like it. So yeah. that's good. So, um, what about the DA course, uh, Lina, that you Oh, have? yes. Um, the DA course that we teach uh, a couple of weeks ago apparently was very successful. So right now we are thinking about launching another or new dates to, to do that course as well. So That's stay amazing. tuned, guys. Let's see how that goes. Because if any of you that is watching right now, it's working as dental assistant or wants to work as a dental assistant in the meantime, they are preparing for the exam. That course is going to be a very good tool for you guys. Exactly. So don't hesitate if you have any question regarding this course, you can always contact Kanika. You know uh, how she is amazing and uh, helpful. Um, what so else? We, we, have, could we have a question oh, here, Rada. Good. Prem is saying, I have one question about theory exam part one. Are they going to conduct this year or next year? Hmm. Okay, Prem, let me check uh, the news in here, but I just I'm received sure. word from practical examination. I haven't received any information regarding um, part one, to be honest. I don't mm -hmm. think they will conduct any exam. Yeah, I don't you know, think so. Some countries are still locked down. Yeah, true. Uh, here we are also kind of locked down. We cannot have more than 20, 20 people, people ga uh, gathering. So, so keep your distance, Rada. Keep oh, your sorry. distance. You too. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I think that we, we won't have any exam this year uh, for written exam uh, as well yeah true Continue. apparently i think the 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 thing to do is just wait up until 2021 i mean it sounds kind of far away but if you think about it guys it's already seven months six months of this year so it's yes. pretty much around the corner to, to 2021 so just try to study as much as possible try to prepare as much as possible uh, try to stay focused mm -hmm. healthy mm -hmm. and like rada said before uh, this is quite important uh, so we can have uh, empowerment of our assessments that's quite important of you guys that have the tools to assess yourself at home and that's pretty much the aim of this video as well same as the one that we had two weeks ago is to give you some tools to assess your work so let me check the so comments we have new comments. oh apparently someone yes. is correcting us thank you for that because it says that in september they are going to conduct um, the, the written examination. So Ellie, Whoa. Ellie is then telling us that the theory is held on 22nd of September. So Prem, I think there you have your answer. In September. But stay tuned because uh, things change uh, all the time. We can see here in Victoria that we have more cases, positive cases. So they are still, um, I mean, uh, giving us some restrictions 
so things might change. Hopefully you can uh, attend this uh, written exam. Mm. But yeah, so far it's a yeah. bit uncertain. Hello Nandini, you just joined, how are you? Hi. Okay guys, so coming back to the subject, the idea of um, this Facebook Live today is that we can check uh, a crown prep. So yeah. two weeks ago, we checked an amalgam yes. that wasn't perfect in order to show you guys the most common mistakes uh, that we can face during a particular task. Today, we would like to take a um, not so perfect crown prep exactly. to show you guys some mistakes and hopefully those mistakes can help you go through some kind of inconvenience that you are having at home when you are doing your, your own tasks. So yes, so let's see what we have here from the crown prep. So as we said last time, we should have our criteria sure. uh, with us. Um, we also have done a video last time. Yep. Uh, please feel free to uh, check that video on YouTube channel. Um, if you uh, like it, uh, please share it with your friends. Uh, and also you can subscribe. Yes, because months brad and i has been we have been very productive you know online <laughs> so we did some discussion very um, a specific discussion about the rubric from crown prep and uh, so probably today we are not going to go in too many details about each point of the rubric but if you really want to know everything about the rubric you should go and take that video as reference that i think is already posted on our youtube channel dental 101 so make sure you subscribe so you can be up to date with all the latest things that we are posting there. Exactly. So we have something here. And I, any idea? Mm. Okay. Uh, prem. It's, uh, so prem. Uh, any idea for the September examination? As I was not able to sit for the... Uh, it says here... Uh, oh yes, so apparently the attempt that they are giving on September 21st and 22nd of this year is for the candidates who couldn't mm. sit in March, that the exam was postponed. So Prem, I think if you didn't have the chance to do it in March and you got that exam postponed, probably your chance is September, according to what we are reading here in the comments. But again guys, this is not the official ADC webpage. So if you see this here, just go and confirm it with the ADC webpage or even call them or write to yeah. them, they always reply. But apparently you will have your attempt on September. Great, so just keep up with the hard work, study. Yeah, so we have Dr. Snigda as well nice with us. Nikita. Hey, how are you Snigda? Good we to see you. We have as well. Oh, Nidhi, Dr. Nidhi, how are you? Yeah, thank you guys for watching us and let's start to revise our criteria roughly for the crown prep yeah so the example that we have today is what right we Which have a, a canine two three yep. okay uh we have also so for the crown uh prep assessment you need uh, your potty so uh before starting uh your crown preparation of course you are doing your potties uh, I like personally to do um, two kinds of putty. So we have the, you know, the usual one uh, that is here that every, uh, everybody knows. And I like also to uh, have this palatal one that fits uh, basically um, like that. Okay, just to show uh, roughly. So, um, we are going to go uh, through all the criteria together. You have your probe. Now we are going to see the margin position. Yeah, so it says here that if we want to be in very good, our margin should be 0 0.5 millimeters supra gingival. That's the ideal situation. So if we take the crown that we already have prepared here or the crown preparation you are going to run your probe like that so from the uh, this the gum here and you are going to run your probe like that so you need to see if you are 0.5 or in the satis satisfactory criteria correct 
uh, I mean a column, you will be either equigangible or at least less than one mm supragangible. So here, sorry, just I check here. As you can see, for instance, here we are more than one mm. I don't know if you can see that. I think once you tilt, yes, I think okay. that it is. Yes, there it is. Here we are more than one mm. Okay. And you should run your probe all the long all the way here and on the palatal side as well. Yeah, because we want that margin to be consistent. It's not that in one spot is going to be 0 0.5 and all the other spots is going to be wrongly placed. So the idea is that your margin position is consistent all throughout your preparation over there. So as you can see in this particular example, the margin is two way above the gum. Exactly. So, and we will say that that will be borderline because it's one millimeter or more super mm. changeable, right? And also very inconsistent all throughout. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. the margin width, so the ideal one should be 1.2 mm uh, in buccal side and uh, lingual side should be uh, 0.5 mm. So, or satisfactory should be in buckle, uh, 1.2 to 1.5 mm, and uh, lingual uh, part should be 0.5 to 1 mm. If you are more than that or less than that, then you are already borderline. So I'm going to... Okay, so Li or Li, I think, sorry if I'm not saying oh, correctly. Eli or Eli, it's saying, when is it 1 mm? This is a very important question and a question that we ask, we get asked a lot. When the black band starts or when the black band ends? So if we have the probe, one millimeter is where? Uh, for me, it's from the... The tip to this the... This here. So to the start of the band? Yes. Exactly. And point two would be the end of the band. The end of the band. So there you have it, guys. We have the tip of the probe. As soon as you get to the little black band, so the inferior border of the black band, that's one millimeter. So we need to be point five, point point, two one, to point point two. Five at, at least to be uh, in the satisfactory. If it's less or more than this uh, range, then you're already borderline. And if it's more than 2 mm or um, in the buckle side or uh, more than 1.5 mm on the lingual margin, then you are already in the unsatisfactory. Then you got zero in this criteria. So you are going to run here. So they are going to assess buckle from here from yeah. here and here and lingual from here to here okay in the criteria you don't have the uh, uh, for the uh, back the mesial and distal side so they don't assess for that okay so we run our probe like that. Here I'm less than uh, 1 mm. Here I'm 1.2, a bit more. Here it's okay. And here it's fine. But I feel that in lingual, we are more, more than, than one. one. Yep. It looks like same. We yep. are even two, two. Yep. and here we are 1.5. Okay, so very inconsistent throughout the margin. It's okay to fluctuate like uh, 0 0.1 or 0.2. We cannot do a perfect, but at least it looks an event, you know, uh, event and continuous. It, this is the third criteria, the margin four. If your margin uh, is not smooth, if it's not continuous and identifiable, then you're already in, you have lower uh, grades. 
So it should be smooth. How we can do that? We can use, uh, for instance, an enamel hatchet, or True. we can smoothen with, with a burr uh, nicely. If, um, if we find some roughness, little roughness or indistinct uh, areas, then you are in satisfactory. But if it's too much, it's, it's uh, um, an overall indistinct and or rough margin, you are already falling in the borderline category. So, hello Gita, and also Eli saying, when the shoulder is a slope, the length is longer. Yes, that's yeah. why Rada told you up until which point they are going to measure vocal and up until which point they are going to measure uh, lingual because they know that there's a little bit of a slope that is going to make some variations in the margin. So that's okay. The important thing is that throughout the entire vocal surface, you keep the width of your margin. And also it says here that um, roughness is going to be good in one area. So in this particular preparation, we are seeing yeah, that we yeah. have a lot of roughness everywhere. We can see here a ledge, for instance. Exactly. You know, uh, here it's not smooth uh, at all. It's rough here. You follow the shoulder, Eli. You said... Or the follow the shoulder. Do we, do we yes. keep the yes. probe straight like that or we follow the slope of yeah, our of margin? Slope. Yeah, you, we need to follow the margin. Yeah. That is what's going to give you the right, the accurate uh, measurement. You follow the inclination of your margin. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. You always keep your probe against the tooth surface so you can have the accurate measurement definitely there and also another uh, tip that can help you guys when you are uh, preparing a crown prep a crown uh, prep with uh, your high speed burr sometimes you can find a lot of roughness in there so you can finish everything with a smoother burr something like a red band if you have that available i think you have it in the adc burr kit also, when you are putting the burr on the surface of the tooth, remember not to stop the burr abruptly on the surface because then you create roughness and gouging. Try to make your movement continuous so you don't create too much uh, roughness around the surface. So um, what we can also do to keep that uh, smoothness and continuous uh, uh, margin, we can go from the center here, the middle, and we go one side and we Correct. go back to the yes. center and one side. Exactly. This that, is very Exactly. Helpful. That gives you a lot of control yeah. because if you don't want to do a continuous movement in the entire vocal surface because, well, sometimes we are a little bit hesitant to do that in order to not create any kind of damage to the tooth. So you can, and usually I start to prepare my teeth like that. Yeah. So always. the buccal surface from the midline towards the interproximal Same. area and also the other side, and that gives you a lot of control. Mm -hmm. So when you have established margin, then you can do the movement continuously in there. Mm -hmm. So the next point of the criteria is damage. going to talk to um, the damage to the adjacent or assessment tooth beyond preparation, and it's followed by the damage to the gingiva point. So, yes, this we see uh, that a lot. Here you can see that we have nicked the tooth, mm. okay? Here as well. Yeah. Uh, so how you can deal with that? You just, what we do, or I mean my technique, is that I wrap the teeth, the adjacent teeth with the matrix band and then it protects, um, protects mm -hmm. my, uh, my adjacent teeth from uh, my uh, burrs. Yeah, you need to, it's not acceptable to yes. damage the, but it's just about using the right tools. So if you guys think that a fender wedge or probably uh, uh, just a band is going to help you be more, um, more sure that you are not going to damage the adjacent tooth, use that, but you need to be very careful. Shoshrada is asking, I'm having trouble cutting occlusal of molar. Any tips? Okay, Shrada. So when you say travels cutting occlusal, you mean you are displacing the anatomy or you are not cutting enough? Uh, which type of problem are you facing? So give us some more information to see if we have any, any tricks that we can give you. Because ideally, I will say, if you know very well your anatomy, um, then you don't displace it. Remember that, let's, let's take as an example of this one here. 
So remember that if we have a molar, let's say that we are going to prepare this molar here. I'm going to compare my central fissure mm. on my adjacent teeth. If I'm going to prepare this occlusal um, surface of this molar for a crown prep, ideally I want to keep that central fissure in line with the other central fissures of my adjacent teeth. If I put that central fissure too much to the too, too much to the palatal or too much to the vocal, then immediately my entire anatomy is going to shift. Another thing to keep in mind is that when we are cutting molars or any other tooth for crown prep, what we, what we want is to keep the same anatomy but in a smaller scale. That means that my central fissure needs to be in the correct place. The height of my cusps and the inclination of my cusps also need to be the same. My vocal cusp is slightly higher than my distobocal. I want that in my crown prep. Same applies for palatal. I don't displace a dot, it says. So you are not displacing the anatomy. So your problem, Shrada, is you are not cutting enough? Or what is it? Because usually the problem that we see is displacing anatomy or the anatomy is not resembling the real tooth. Usually what we see often is that the central fissure is displaced uh, like lower molar, we often see that it displays uh, lingually. What I advise uh, like the candidates is just make sure that your, uh, the tip of your burr do cross the central fissure. Okay, just uh, follow the anatomy. For instance, we do the cusp, my burr, my central fissure is here. I keep my uh, tip a bit kind of a wave to begin with, and then I follow the slope of my cusp Correct. and the inclination. Yeah, because apparently Shraddha is having problem positioning the cusp tips. Again, try to use as reference your, con your adjacent teeth. So look how my cusp is, these cusps from the buccal are aligned with the buccal cusp of the adjacent teeth. So basically you have your, your reference there. If your cusp is not following the same line of the cusp of the adjacent teeth, then you are displacing it. What bird to use? Well, which bird do you use? I usually just use uh, my stray fisher bird. Yeah, I use yeah, the needle I, bird yeah. in the beginning at least. Yeah. There's no special bird for it. I think it's more about, um, you know, take your guidance for the adjacent teeth. Okay. Yeah, well, let's go to the next point. It's about debris. And damage to the oh, gingiva, damage to the sorry. gingiva, sorry, yeah. So yeah, I mean, there is no mystery in that. You, yeah. don't, you don't touch the, 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 gingiva. the gingiva, the gum with your, with your burr. Really pay attention. It's unlike the other uh, task where there is a criteria of damage to the gingiva, here it can be tricky because we are working uh, on the margin of our tooth and we can damage indeed the, the gingiva. So just uh, stay away. What we can do that will help uh, both in the margin position and the damage to the gingiva, we can start a bit higher and then uh, along the, uh, the way we will go a bit lower and this will uh, prevent us to um, both uh, uh, having a margin position that is too high or too low and also a damage to the gingiva. I want also to, as I said in the, the previous video, we said that these two criteria of damaging the adjacent uh, and assessment tooth and the damage to the gingiva if you um, made mistakes uh, here, if you make mistakes here, uh, then it will also um, uh, affect your uh, provisional uh, criteria and grades. Correct. Okay, it's double punishment here. Now debris, uh, so make sure that you don't have any debris, that you uh, clean well usually, 
after uh, the crown prep we um, are going to do our provisional and uh, then we we put a bit of vaseline so this should mm -hmm. be um, enough to clean just pay attention here if you leave debris from the resin uh, from the provisional crown on the teeth and under the gum mm. like here maybe uh, i'm not sure if the candidate left uh, some resin but if you pay attention that you don't leave any resin here or here or on, on the top other of the surface yes. of the other teeth so uh, this will again uh, punish you in a crown prep uh, criteria task and also uh, for provision so that means that we can get like a double punishment for exactly real? exactly okay. oh my god yeah i mean if you have enough time if you manage enough your time you should be able to have some spare minutes just to check all those minor details because they are important and that's why they are here in this in the and criteria. it's easy like debris uh pff, yeah just checking yeah, cleaning true. you got yeah. uh, three easily points yeah usually we we got messy when we are rushing yes. so behind this probably management of time is going to be quite important time and stress yes uh, next point of the criteria is tooth selection so here guys there's no in between yeah. you either prepare the right tooth or you go straight on and satisfactory if we don't prepare the correct tooth so remember take a deep breath <laughs> yes again time management manage stress Remember that you are going to have all the time your tasks display on the screen that is in front of you the entire six hours of your technical day. So make sure that you attend one task before rushing into the other task. Make sure that you are reading exactly which tooth you need to prepare. Mm. You wouldn't believe the amount of mistakes that we make when we are under stress, yeah. like preparing the wrong tooth. So if you are seeing on the screen two, three, make sure that you repeat to yourself two, three, it's upper left hand side and you go and check that that's the tooth that you need to attempt otherwise it's going to be a straightaway fail yeah i mean this criteria is three points for free but only stress can mess uh, mess up this uh, yeah this criteria definitely it's just here about stress the next point of the criteria guys is the path of insertion so it says here that you're going to be very good if we have Optimal path of insertion. Sorry, guys, we have a little bit of movement of the camera there. Um, so, path of insertion is not optimal, but can be managed by the lab, but requires no modification of adjacent teeth. Okay, so for this particular point of the criteria, position of your bird, quite important, and also your position. If you have a good visual access to the two that you are preparing, you are not going to till your bird when you are preparing things. So basically, make sure that your bird is correctly positioned. Remember, guys, when we are talking about, let's say, the buckles have two planes. The first plane that needs to go here in this part and that other plane that we need to basically bevel to create the sensation of the tooth being into the arch. So if you take a look to this particular one, if I put my probe here, I can know how the, the bear was inclinated when this person was doing this crown prep. What we want is a perfect inclination of my bear that it should be like this. So when I try to correct the position of my probe, I can see some discrepancies. So make sure that you are running along your bird in the correct position. First, touching this first part here, and then preparing that, sec preparing that second plane here that you need to prepare as well. But if you do this, that's an incorrect position of your bird. You are basically taking your tooth towards the buckle instead of this nice curvature that we should have in our buccal surface of our teeth. The path of insertion is why is it uh, important and relevant? It's for the provisional to fit. And the real crown to fit. And the real crown to fit. Uh, so if you don't have a good path of insertion, then how uh, your provisional can fit, you know, 
or uh, for real life uh, dentistry, how your crown will fit as well. Correct. So Undercut. everything has a logic oh, behind. Yes. Remember guys that this is not just a technical task. What they are trying to see is yes, you have the skills, the manual and the hand skills to perform a task, but also that you analyze why these things are important. Yeah. Because if you create undercuts, if you create an incorrect path of insertion, they are going to think that that's what you are going to deliver when you are practicing here in Australia. Everything correlates to real life. So make sure that when you are doing this, you know why this is important as, just, as Rada just said. So undercuts, so um, undercuts, what, why we don't want any undercuts? Because when uh, we are going to place our crown uh, in the future our, or our provisional, then uh, if we have undercut, we cannot retrieve our provisional or our crown. Okay, so how we can assess that we have undercuts? So again, we run our uh, probe and it should not, you know, again with the yeah. damper, but we should not have any light, any gaps, any gap or any, any you know, yeah. in here. You, so, and look, what Rada is trying to show you guys I'm there, not sure if we can see. it's very pertinent with the question that um, Dr. Depeche is asking. Like, how useful are the loops to assess our work? Oh, you you this see is... these undercuts, because probably, let me, can you just like from this, like a shot from the side? Because in this particular crown prep, you will see that when she puts the prop in there, there's a gap in between the tooth and the probe. And this is an undercut. And that's an undercut. Because the position of the bear wasn't correct. Therefore, the path of insertion is not going to be correct. I'm not sure if we can I'm see it. I'm not sure if we can see it. It's very finicky. Almost there you can see it, guys. So the probe is not touching the tooth all the way down to the margin. That, that the probe has near to the margin area, that light that you are seeing right there in that shot, thank you cameraman, amazing, that light is an undercut. And that's all because of bad positioning of your bird. So there we see it. I can almost see the shadow in the shot over there. So you see how these tiny details are very finicky. So loops are going to be quite important for these guys. We we, we have done a video yeah, about we have, loops. We have, we have done everything right now, <laughs> Rada. We have done a video about loops, that's true. If you don't know uh, or you're not sure, yeah, yeah. just visit uh, uh, our YouTube uh, channel. You will have an entire video about loops, how, how to, shoot. to shoot. And if still you don't know or you're not sure or you would like to have one, uh, you can always contact Kanika. We, are, uh, we have some loops here that are amazing. Uh, so feel free to um, contact Kanika for that. Yeah, true. Definitely, uh, we always said that loops are a personal choice. Yes. There are people that they are very comfy working without loops. I do admire those people yeah. because sometimes trying to figure out these tiny things is very hard. So for me, talking from the point of view of a dentist in, uh, from Colombia, I never use loops over there. I just use them when I start uh, preparing for the ADC here. And I think I'm not going back to the old ways. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's such, it's a, such a good help. Oh, yes. Yeah. Definitely. And especially, guys, here we're assessing with the jaw outside of our mannequin. Exactly. But the exam day, you cannot do that. So you will have first to respect the infection control, the distance with the patient. You cannot remove your jaw and assess if you have an undercut with your probe or anything else. You need to keep that inside the mouth, assess yourself when you're working and keeping a distance with the patient. You cannot bend, you cannot put your head inside his mouth. So, I mean, for me, it was extremely helpful. Okay, so Sieda, right? Sayeda. 
Sayeda, sorry, no it's worries. asking how much should be interproximal reduction. We are it, we are getting there. It's yeah. the next. Uh, it, it's the next part of the yes. of the of the robbery. Is it measured from margin to proximal surface or adjacent to? From one from what point to assess interproximal reduction? Oh, hi, Crutard, and hi, Dr. Griva. How are you? Welcome, Dr. Griva from our branch in Mumbai. Hello, Dr. Griva. Remember that we had those good news two weeks ago? Yeah. We have a new branch in Mumbai, and Dr. Griva is pretty much uh, on top of that branch over there. So, She's okay, awesome. let's talk, uh, let's give some uh, some answers to Shieda. Sorry. Sayeda. Sayeda. I'm terrible with that. Sorry, guys. Sayeda, we so are going we, to talk about... We are getting yes, there. Yes, getting there. But just we finished the... Uh, well, we, yeah. we finished Under the cuts. undercut. Now we want uh, to talk about the overall preparation taper. This taper. is taper. Sorry, I'm terrible with English, not with the Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, or I'm using my French accent. Yeah. Okay, anyway. So, Which uh, accent? This one would be a French accent. Okay, taper. cool. Taper. So taper, uh, ideally, should be 12. Okay? Uh, but it's very hard to get 12, as you know. So uh, the uh, satisfactory um, criteria uh, tells us that we can have a taper between 6 degree and 20 degree. All right? And this is about how the... Uh, inclination of your burr uh, will be. It, this is, is controlled by your hand. I always make sure that before starting to press on the foot uh, control, how I'm placing my burr. Agree, completely. So, again, I take my probe and I run my probe against my walls and I see uh, my taper. I can also, uh, in proximal part, I step, uh, uh, I take a step for uh, backward. Sorry, and I check how my walls are proximal. So I, I can see here we have a okay taper. Okay, I would say this is a little bit too much, and. Um, uh, let me check. Uh, that's okay. You can check from above as well. So what Rada is doing that, guys, remember that she told you we cannot remove this from the JAWS day of the yeah. exam. So you need to be very skillful with it. To be able to assess every single part of your preparation. Also for the taper, remember that if you position your bed correctly, and if let's say you use um, the needle burr interproximally, that needle burr is tapered. Cool. And with the correct position, that taper of the needle burr, it's going to give you the degree that you need uh, to have in your preparation. But if you over tilt yes. that, uh, that burr, then you are going to over -tape, taper your preparation. So again, we coming back to the same thing, position. Position of your handpiece. Well, exactly. With the burr. Being mindful of that. It's yeah. very, very important. And especially when you're doing your uh, palatal uh, preparation, really takes some time. What can help me also, I can compare with the other front uh, teeth. You see, I take my burr and I run it like that, and I see how to follow. Uh, slightly my uh, my taper according to yeah, the other teeth. To the other teeth, yes. Because we want to keep that tooth in line with the rest of the teeth, in line in the arch. So that's why we need to also assess using as reference the other surface of the teeth. Again, guys, this is about utilizing your probe correctly, your mouth mirror and Visual positioning it. yeah, your, and your visual addition. Yeah. So uh, if you over taper, you, we won't have retention. If we don't taper enough, it's too it's not parallel. Going, it's not going to go too in. straight. The crown and provisional crown. I mean, you are going to struggle with that. Correct. Yeah. Remember that, um, depending on the preparation that you have, you are not going to struggle, or you are going to struggle with your uh, with temporary the second crown. Task. Correct. So here, as we said, it's kind of double punishment if we don't do something correctly because it will affect the provisional crown. So, uh, link wall reduction, buckle reduction, and uh, 
occlusal. The occlusal. So here, uh, where the putties will become relevant. So one thing I like uh, with uh, the canine, I found it's very useful. Um, unlike the other uh, teeth, uh, like so I don't do that, but for canine, I use this pineapple key. I, so here you see the candidates didn't ha, uh, do a proper putty. So we see a gap. It should really fit the like that. Teeth. Yeah. Okay. So that putty is quite, quite good. It's magic. It's magic. I also use that one because in that one you can check uh, how much of the palatal reduction have you done and if you have chipped that your cusp. Your, so here we can assess our occlusal, kind of occlusal reduction, okay? And we need to be uh, 2, two mm. mm. Yeah. So the incisor reduction, 2 mm. If we are between 2 and 3, we are still satisfactory. But if we are less or uh, no. too, more, too much, so 3 to 3.5 or even yeah. more, then we are on the other side of the fence. Yes. So here we can assess, as we can see, okay, we run. And also this party will help you to follow, you know, the occlusal anatomy, the incisal anatomy. And here we have our original tip exactly. of our cusp. Then it will help us to position the tip of our, our cusp here while we are reducing. Can you see? Yeah. So, I don't even have a cusp. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's very indistinguishable. It's like, uh, I don't know, a finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not distinguishable in there. Yeah, so here we should have a nice reduction, a nice reduction, a tip, uh, not too sharp because we don't want any sharp as... Line uh, angles. As per the line angles criteria, everything should be smooth and rounded. Uh, not as here, it's too rounded. So this is very useful for that uh, criteria. Now, the putty for the uh, incisal, uh, for the, sorry, the buckle and the uh, palatal part. I'm coming here again. The putty is not fitting here. We can see a gap, which means my putty is not nice. It's yeah. not correct. So, okay, for the uh, purpose of our show, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to press. But you see, if the, mm. there is a gap like that, it will uh, mislead your uh, measurements. In that shot, you guys can see how vocal that preparation is in there. You, you can show. see how. So let me show you guys there. Oh, thank you, Rada. Okay, mm -hmm. so very well. <laughs> so when we try to show it like this, you will see in this particular area that this buccal surface has been undercut, yeah. and that part that is going to the gingival margin is very also uh, overcut. So the entire wall is facing towards the buccal because the position of the bird was like that. If I have a good position avoiding those undercuts, my wall is going to have the desired inclination. So that these potties are very good to assess how our work is going. Uh, and in this particular case, we found this, uh, this potty with this crown prep that is pretty much showing every single mistake that we can make. That's why, guys, rushing the putties is not a good idea either. Oh, yes. Again, time management, being very mindful of what we are doing. We are not just doing putties just for the sake of doing them. We are doing putties because we need to measure everything correctly, and we also need to produce a good temporary crown. So a bad putty is not going to give you real measure measurements here. So, and we can see here also the amount of cutting that has been done here in the palatal aspect a lot of because we need to have you know somehow 
point five to, uh, to one. To one, yes. So from zero point five millimeters to one, it's that acceptable. Is the ideal. But look at this, guys. It's just let me check how much is that. Oh my God, it's, it's 2.5, 2 2.5, a lot, a lot of overcutting. You can go up to 1.5 to still be in the satisfactory exactly. uh, case. So in this particular case, if we wanted to correct this entire thing, I need to cut too much here. I cannot cut any more here, but the end result when we try to cut this wall here is that we are going to have a very thin preparation that is not going to survive in the mouth. So that's why uh, this uh, particular crown preparation is not very good. Also, this putty, thank you, Lina. So this putty will help you to follow here the um, outline of the canine. So we measure like that, okay? So we should be 1.2 at this uh, uh, point. And then, because we have a natural curvature of our canine, mm -hmm. we should have a little increase of our reduction up to 1.8. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Because here, it is a kind of a bit almost straight, okay? And here we have the second plan that is inclined like that. And then we start from 1.2 or 1.5 or, uh, or so, because we can go up to that. And then we follow up to 1.8. So this will give us a nice curvature. We are following the uh, outline of the canine. Same here, okay? Um, for the uh, measure and uh, distal reduction, I'm going to use my palatal key, okay? And Either you can use a palatal key to check, okay? We can see that here we have more than two, almost three, but well, the tooth is yeah. mixed anyway, and same here. So, okay, Rara, stop just a second there so we can answer Sayeda, Sayeda question. <laughs> um, because she says, how do you measure that? From margin to proximal surface or from the adjacent tooth? Okay, yes. I have a little tip for that. We you love can, tips. Yes, but I don't have the burr. Uh, I'll leave you with Lina. I will uh, have my burr. Um, I'll take my burr and I will show you. So we can uh, pass a special burr here and there to see if we uh, cut enough and if we don't cut too much. So, okay, Lina is coming with the burr kit and I will show you that. Meanwhile, uh, just to, um, so we finish with the line angle. Basically, you, you can run your finger, you feel if you have any sharpness. Uh, you should not feel any sharpness. Uh, so the line angle should be uh, well-rounded. So the burr that I like to use is this one. So this burr, I think it's 881. So here it should pass, okay? Because it is, I think, like 1.2 mm in here, all right? But this side of the burr should not pass because it's 1.8. So if it passes, then I, I know that I am. In exam, we, you can't do that. Uh, just take, you yeah. take your burn, do that, but you can always put the burn uh, on the handpiece. You don't cut anything. You don't press on the foot control and then you pass it inactive. Okay, it passes. And what I have done in my exam is that I put down the other side. They won't notice, but just be careful. I don't say like you cannot do it uh, freely, but just try to do that. Pass it like that. If it passes, then it means that you overcut. Yes. So what we always say is that we always check. Prepare, check. Prepare, Correct. check. 
prepare check until you reach the ideal uh, goal. Never, never rushing things. I know that sounds kind of unachievable because one of the main concerns that every single candidate has is, is the time going to be enough? Is the time going to be enough? So guys, the time is going to be enough uh, because you need to practice a lot at home so you are able to manage every single task in the proper time. Exactly. You need to train yourself for that. There's no other way. There's no shortcuts for that, guys. You need to train very, very well. You cannot uh, go beyond 12 o'clock because after oh, yeah. beyond 12 o'clock, you should have your DA. Yeah, it's a dental assistant side. Yes. So you need to play with that. You need to go beyond in 12 o'clock and if you really want to have a good visual on two, three, let's say, you can, you tilt, can the tilt the little bit, the, the mannequin head yes. up until 12 degrees, not in more than that. So it's just a slightly tilt, and then you are going to have a full visual of your two, three there. All right, guys, if you have any yeah, other I think questions. An hour has passed. Wow, time you flies know, with you guys. We are so time happy Time flies to be with when you. we are talking to you. Thank you so much for all your questions. This is uh, quite good uh, to be able to interact with you guys because I do understand that in these times, you know, uh, coming to the center is a little bit tricky. We want to keep the distance and everything else. So I, I find that this is a good way to keep in touch with you guys. And to motivate you. Oh, yes. Remember, keep the spirit up, uh, keep practicing. Keep doing everything that you need to do uh, in order to keep your task in a very good uh, manner. Uh, assess, you, assess yourself very well as well. It's quite important and that's pretty much the aim of all of this. Oh, uh, Himani, thank you for watching our video yes. and, stay with, and being with us. We really um, appreciate it and also we really enjoyed uh, being with you guys. So we'll see you in two weeks. Yes. Uh, stay tuned and um, we we'll love to have you uh, next time with us. Yes, uh, definitely. Lila and Radha Show. Show. Correct. <laughs> and if you have any suggestions for upcoming topics, we yeah. are also open to that. Our, pro resident. our production uh, staff will assess <laughs> your suggestions, guys. So we are open to hear everything that you want to see in this space as well. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Bye. Bye-bye.